um, I would love to talk to you about this analogy of the symphony. And the reason why I'd like to talk to you about this analogy is because the unity of all being is the symphony. Infinite consciousness is the symphony. It is the 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 the, the seemingly or the um, illusory, which is that it does it's the way that it appears is uh, is has has it can can lead people off um, from the from the truth. So it's not as it appears that the symphony has a a good analogy in the sense that. And I want to hear what you think about this. There's the unity of all being, but then there's there is this again this illusory this the this the self this Alan and Rupert and all of these eight billion seemingly individuals. But part of the beauty of the symphony analogy is that people don't reside in the ultimate, which is. Okay, non-duality, excellent. And r- r- rather it's both you, the unity, it's non-duality, excellent. And it's also, I get the opportunity to be, an, we get to be artists, right? We get to, we get to make great uh, studio uh, pottery, right? We get to make great, content we get to engineer we get to design we get to tinker but we do that all from the place of unity we do that all from the place of non-duality is that about right how does that resonate yes Uh, ultimately everything absolutely everything comes from or, or is an expression or modulation of consciousness or awareness I use the words synonymously Uh, some of our thoughts and feelings and our subsequent activities and relationships are mediated through the belief I am a temporary finite separate self so even though those thoughts and feelings and the activities and relationships that they generate ultimately come from consciousness they do not express the the what is true of the nature of consciousness or reality why because they are filtered through the belief in separation and therefore express that belief ultimately of course they still come from the same place that everything comes from so i would suggest that uh, true creativity uh, uh, is any uh, could could be said to be any um, form, be that form in in words, in music, in uh, yep. any art form, is is a, is a form that comes unmediated, directly from our our deepest reality or or, or being that is not filtered through the sense of separation, although it requires the agency of the person to articulate that expression, the the source of that expression doesn't come from a a, a person, the the feeling of being temporary, Mm. finite, Mm -hmm. separate. It is an expression of the reality that lies behind, so to speak. The, the the finite mind or, or the separate person and and which is why the artist calls themselves a channel so often yes yes and 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 the purpose of this art that that is informed by um the background of awareness is to bring the truth or the reality that is inherent in it out into the world in order to be shared with humanity yes Yes, and, and that this is the idea that I may be a, a violinist, but you may be a saxophone player, and there's also a drummer, and there's a cellist, and there's the clarinet, and that's the idea of, and they're all, and by the way, two clarinets are pl- maybe playing different ha- harmonies, and so there's that as well. So that's the idea that all eight billion are, in that sense, art artists in the symphony and that they have their you they have a unique expression 
Yes. Uh, okay, Alan, go ahead. Yeah. Can, can I um can I upgrade your metaphor? Please upgrade it. Yes. <laughs> because your you, your metaphor is, is 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 it's a beautiful metaphor and and it, it's true I can see what what you're trying to articulate but the the, the first metaphor that you referred to the metaphor of the dream has um I think is more efficient and is clearer. So can, can I if, if you want, we can go back to the, the symphony, but can I re-articulate what you're saying in terms of the, of the dream metaphor? Because I think it's m easier to speak about and much easier to understand. So as you said in your introduction, take what happens to us when we have a, a, a dream at night. We, uh, where, are you, where, where are you located now, Alan? Where, are you, where do you live? In South Dakota right now. You're yep. in Dakota. Okay, so yeah. say... say um, you fall asleep in South Dakota and you imagine that you're walking on the streets of London. You don't view the, the dreamed streets of London directly from your mind asleep in South Dakota. Your mind has forgotten that it is yeah. dreaming it has overlooked itself and your own mind has located itself within its own dream you now seem to be alan walking on the streets of london that is the only way your mind can perceive the dream by overlooking itself locating itself in the dream and yes, viewing yes. what is in fact its own activity from this localized perspective in the dream as the streets of London. Now, everybody else that you encounter on the streets of London, which from your limited perspective seem, who seem to be separate people, are in fact the activity of your own indivisible mind. When you wake up in the morning, you realize th the entire dream, all the different people, and all the different objects were the activity. There were no entities there. It was all the activity of my own mind. It only appeared as a multiplicity and diversity of objects and selves from the illusory perspective of the self that I seemed to become in the dream. Now, Let's say that you now, you meet one of these people, you meet an old friend on the streets of London in your dream. You haven't seen this friend for a long time. You both go to a cafe, you sit down, and you have a conversation about something, and you both disagree. You're, you're talking about um, American politics, okay? And, and you completely disagree with your friend uh, uh, about... So you, 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 you have one point of view. Your friend has another completely point of view. So your point of view, you, you each have a series of thoughts. You think that your thoughts are right. You think your friend's thoughts are in, incorrect. But, but it, so you can have two completely different thoughts, opposing thoughts that, that seem to be completely opposite to each other and are indeed in the dream opposite to each other. But when you wake up, you realize that both the true thoughts and the untrue thoughts were generated in your own mind. And that goes yeah. for the, the pleasant yes. sensations, the unpleasant sensations, the, 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 the kind thoughts, the unkind thoughts, the loving feelings, the unloving feelings, the, the behavior that is intelligent and loving, the behavior that is cruel and unjust. It all ultimately is the activity of a, a single universal mind. Yes, yes. In so in the analogy, the idea then is that infinite consciousness has within in the symphony has take we 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 are we the all the artists in all the seemingly individual artists have the the we we have a filter the filter of the the mind in the dream that then uh, is we, that there's, there's a process of realizing for the, 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 fi the seemingly finite minds to realize that, ah, aha, the infinite consciousness. And, and, and it's both, aha, the infinite consciousness. And it is also that it's not, aha, okay. 
and but it's but it's aha and so it's the realization and it's the creation from that place of realization yes, so the the, cla- the clarinet player the violinist etc they create their melody harmony from that place of aha and yes, yes exactly yes. The, the, exactly uh, um the, the, let's keep both metaphors uh, uh, alive so uh, um let's let's take there are essentially two possibilities let's go back i'm going to translate what you've now said into the dream metaphor you're back on the and by the way rupert i just want to say i think this is so powerful for the synthesis of east and west because the the east is very on the non-dual and the west is very on the individual and which is very interesting because then it can synthesize them into that harmony go ahead Yeah. yeah yeah so let's go back to the um the dream analogy you meet your friend so you 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 are the dreamed character Let, let's continue to call you alan and your your friend uh, um he's called let's say he's called david so alan and david are are, are, are talking in the cafe so, so let's say that that alan has recognized that the the essential nature of his mind the essential nature of himself is shared with everyone and everything. Although he, Alan still perceives from the yeah. localized perspective of his body, he can only see the streets of London from where he's sitting on his cafe table. But he knows that the nature of that which perceives in him is not limited to located in or generated by his body. So he knows that although he seems to be a separate individual, what he essentially is, is shared by everyone and everything. And his thoughts and feelings and his subsequent activities and relationships are informed by this understanding. Now, David does not realize this. Alan's friend, David, believes, he, he, Alan's friend David reasons with himself, well, every time I close my eyes, the world disappears. Every time I open my eyes, the world or the streets of London, in this case, they reappear. So it's perfectly obvious that whatever it is that perceives the world must live just behind my eyes in my brain and was obviously generated by my brain. It is limited to my brain. And when my brain dies, my consciousness will die with it. In other words, David believes that he is a temporary finite self that is separate from, albeit related to, everyone and everything else. And all his thoughts and feelings, or almost all his thoughts and feelings, and his subsequent activities and relationships are informed by that understanding. So Alan and David have very different kinds of thoughts. They, they they're different in, instrument players in that sense as well. If one player is playing... Well, all they're the different, time, they are different instruments, but what's more important is that the understanding that is expressed through the instrumentality of each of their bodies yes, and minds yes. is a different understanding, although ultimately yes, yes. it is all the activity of yes. Alan asleep in South Dakota. Nevertheless, in one case, in the case of Alan in the dream, his thoughts and feelings express the reality. And in David's case, they, they, they do not express that. They express separation. And as a result of the belief in separation, David is able to not only think and feel, but act and relate in the ways that are not consistent with truth love, yeah, peace, yeah. And justice, yes, yes. And, to, and, and to extrapolate now for, from David, if you were to take David's point of view, um, in extreme cases, uh, one whose thoughts and feelings and subsequent activities and relationships are informed by this sense of separation is able to commit um, acts of gross unkindness and injustice. Yeah. They are still the activities of the same infinite... Yes mind but filtered through the sense of separation they are able to behave in a way that is not consistent with reality whereas what alan in the dream does everything he says he, he he is an artist and the purpose of his art is to express his understanding and communicate it and 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 share it 
just, just as that is the case for Alan in real life as well. <laughs> okay, back, back to the symphony. <laughs> it's, it's so, this is playing so beautifully. So the, <clears throat> the ultimate dreamer of infinite consciousness dreams up the, dreams up the, the illusory universe in the sense that it's, it does, it's not, it doesn't seem to be exact what it what it is but yes. can, can, I, can yeah. I hold that thought just for a minute yeah Alan. go ahead, go ahead. i don't like to interrupt but i, I want to I, I wanted to say this the last time you yes you mentioned please about the illusory world because i think this is this is very important it, it's yes. something that i misunderstood for years and i think it's something that causes a lot of people who would otherwise be interested in these matters um, trouble and for, yes, for good yes, reason yes. with yes. this approach in and that is because this the world is referred to as being an illusion and for many people the idea that something is an illusion is tantamount to saying that it is not real yeah. so i want to make a very clear distinction between yeah. something that is not real and something that is an illusion, an illusion. Yes. yes so let, let, let to just let's just you, you, i want to use an example uh, a square circle. Try to imagine now a square circle. Or in the Zen tradition, the one hand clapping. L okay, but let's, yeah. let's stick with yeah. the square. <laughs> Try to imagine now a, a square circle. We can't do it. In other words, it's not even possible to imagine the illusory image of a square circle. A square circle is not an illusion. It is utterly non-existent. Yeah. However, when we are watching a movie, for instance, and we see a landscape in the, in the movie, the, the landscape is obviously an illusion, but it is not non-existence. There is something that is there. There is a reality to the yeah. illusory landscape. And of course, when we go up to it, we touch the landscape, we find, relatively speaking, that its reality is the screen. Screen, now, yes. All of this the world, as you rightly say from this, in this perspective, the world is an illusion, not in the sense that it is not real. real. It is absolutely real in the sense that it is, the world is an illusion in the sense that it is not what it appears to be. It appears to be a multiplicity and diversity yeah. of objects and selves only from the limited and localized perspective of a separate self or a yes. finite mind. Yes, yes. This is going to play beautifully. Into, okay, so yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, th that, go, that was very go important. Back to your, go back to your thought about the illusory yeah. world. <laughs> that, that was very important, Rupert. Thank you. So the ultimate dreamer of the infinite consciousness, um, ha we have this um, dreams, this, the, this, the illusory, which is it's not what it appears to, to be, um, s symphony. And then here's here's what where I'm really interested in this symphony. The symphony has the the these these eight billion seemingly again illusory in the sense it uh, artists that are individual that are being filtered through the, the the finite mind and that but here's here's something interesting my. Um, understanding of 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 infinite consciousness. I think, and I think it was um, Atmananda Krishna Menon who said that if you do have to um, th think of it in a sense, you can think of it as behind, behind, behind you, the infinite consciousness, um, and that the the more that you go through the process of self abidance so you go through atma vichara self inquiry to gain the realization of infinite consciousness and then you have the process of self abidance so the idea is that you have potentially varying degrees of artistry in the sense that there are people that have deep self abidance in infinite consciousness so when they're playing their violin they're doing it in as in the acronym sto service to other so they're playing their violin with service to other because they're they're they've they've realized that versus maybe a clarinet player who in the case of david in your dream remember so this is where we can connect the two analogies david in the case of the dream hasn't went through the deeper self inquiry and self abidance process and so he is under more of the acronym of st 
S, service to self. So he is playing the clarinet, but that's why he's also going through the process of seeking objects, relationships, substances, all these external things to make himself happy and peaceful. Um, so how, how is that? We're, I, think, I feel like we're getting cl closer to an interesting synthesis between in yeah. the dream okay. and the symphony. Is it? Okay, so and do you see the spectrum also in terms of the eight billion? And do you see them evolving as well in the sense that someone that is service to self, inevitably, Rupert, we had slavery and we don't have slavery anymore in much of in much of the world. And so there is a sort of ethical or consciousness or awareness. It, not in a sense that that consciousness or the awareness is evolving, but our ethics and our morals and our philosophies are evolving to be more towards service to other and more towards the unity, towards that truth of the infinite consciousness 